Our lesson today is entitled Justice and Sabbath Laws, and it comes out of the book of Matthew, 12th chapter, verses 1 through 14. It's a Sunday School lesson for June the 3rd, 2018. My name is Tony Miller, uh, the Lord of the Sabbath. And the series of lessons, at least the first four of these lessons in this uh, new quarter that we have uh, uh, are entitled uh, under this uh, subject, uh, Our Just and Merciful God. Amen. So the aim of this lesson is to explore Jesus' approach to, question, to questions of how properly to observe the Sabbath, to affirm the importance, uh, the importance of responding to human needs and identify ways believers can prioritize compassionate service over external religious obligations. Uh, this is my YouTube channel. Uh, again, there's maybe 60 plus uh, lessons here. Uh, I wish if you would so choose, hit the subscribe and the bell and you'll get these lessons automatically. Like I said, there are 60 plus in my archive of uh, past lessons. And if you hit the like button, if you so choose, or if you hit the dislike, but please, if you hit the dislike, leave me a, a reason for that. Amen. So my style of, of teaching is uh, hermeneutical in its form. Hermeneutical refers to the idea that one's understanding of a text is as whole as established by reference to his individual parts when they understand of each individual parts is referenced by the whole that there's this this circle that you is that this the text is is interpreted by itself and there is no private interpretation i stick with kind of a historical background i really believe that it's all about the content and the context i really like to share with you the who what when where how and why and we go verse by verse and and if you share you've been in any of these lessons that i've shared before you they're highly pictorial because i believe that a picture is worth a thousand words amen so I share with you most every time I find the definitions, terms, people, places, sometimes maps or whatever that are germane to the lesson and try to give you some clarity uh, in the beginning of this lesson so that when we get to them, that they'll be, they'll have more mean, they'll be more meaningful when we get there. So uh, the first word is showbread and it comes out of Leviticus 24, five through nine and verse five says, take the finest flour and bake 12 loaves of bread using two tenths of an ephod for each loaf. For six and arrange them in two stacks, six sta six in each stack on the table of pure gold before the Lord. It's a table of showbread. <clears throat> and each stack uh, put some pure incense, a memorial portion to represent the bread and to be a food offering presented to the Lord. Verse eight. And the bread is to be set out before the Lord regularly, Sabbath after Sabbath on behalf of the Israelites as a lasting covenant. It belongs to Aaron and his sons who are to eat it in the sanctuary area because it is most holy part of their perpetual share of the food offering presented to the Lord. Amen. So I'll share with you what those loaves look like. There is two stacks of six and, and the, the incense is above those stacks. Amen. And this uh, showbread is changed on every Sabbath day and the old loaves were eaten by the priests in the holy place, as I share with you from the book of Leviticus. Amen. Corn, uh, as is mentioned through the corn, through the barley or wheat, the word corn used in our translation of the Bible has no reference to the maize or the Indian corn, which we have in the United States. Uh, it has, uh, as it has with us, this uh, Indian corn is was unknown until the discovery of America, so it's unlikely that the translators knew anything about it. The word corn was applied, as it is still in England, to wheat or rye or oats or barley. It explains the circumstance that they rub it in their hands, we find in Luke 6 and 1, which I'll share with you in a bit, to separate the grain from the chaff. So basically, this corn was not like ears of corn, as it may be said in the King James. Amen. People, uh, uh, King David, David reigned over uh, Israel for 40 years, seven and a half uh, in Hebron and 33 in Jerusalem. That was after the, after he took over from Saul. His long reign was uh, later regarded as Israel's golden age. David himself was seen as a model king. David was far was from the uh, tribe of uh, Judah. 
He was a sinner, a man after God's own heart, a, rep, a repentant sinner, God's chosen one, and through his lineage, the Messiah would ultimately come from. Amen. Disciples or apostles, this is more often uh, than not referred to initial 12, the followers of Jesus. The standard definition of disciple is one who uh, is a noun as someone who adheres to the teaching of another, is a follower or a learner, and refers to someone who takes up the ways of someone else. And applied to Jesus, a disciple, someone who learns from him to live like him, someone who, because of God's awakening grace, conforms to his or own, his or her words and in the ways and the word and the words, words and the ways into the word, words and the ways of Jesus Christ. And, and, and here I share with you who those 12 were. Amen. Priest. <clears throat> So Levitical priesthood began with Aaron, the older brother of Moses, as back in Exodus 28, 1 through 3, and Aaron's descendants serve as priests in Israel, ministering in the tabernacle and later in the temple, primarily as mediators between God and man. The Levitical priests priest bore the responsibility of offering the sacrifices required by that, by the Mosaic law. Amen. Pharisees, another term we find in our lesson is quite, quite dominant. The Pharisees or priests, they were mostly middle class businessmen. Therefore, they were in contact with the common man. Pharisees were held in much higher esteem by the common man than the Sadducees, who were other uh, religious leaders. Though they were in a minority uh, in the Sanhedrin, which is like our Supreme Court, they held the minority uh, number of positions as a priest. They seemed to control decision making of the Sanhedrin far more than the Sadducees, again, because they had the support of the people. Uh, amen. Uh, also, these Pharisees, uh, <clears throat> they were re uh, religiously, uh, they, they religiously accepted the written word as inspired by God at the time of Christ's earthly ministry. This would have been what we now call the Old Testament, but they also gave equal authority to the oral traditions and attempted to defend this position by saying all went back to Moses. Evolving over centuries, these traditions added to God's word, which is forbidden. The Pharisees sought to strictly obey to these traditions and rituals along with this law. So that there, there is these 10, uh, which we all know that the 10 commandments, but there are another 613 additional laws that were made by these religious leaders over time and uh, and and the, that's what made it almost impossible to to serve the law. Amen. So I share with you a section of some of those 613 laws, and one of them will be germane to our lesson. And these are laws under that sanctuary, the sanctuary of Yahweh, Almighty God. Do not de neglect the duty of guarding the sanctuary of Yahweh. The high priest must must not enter into the Holy of Holies without the appropriate sacrifice. 69. A priest uh, with a defect or blemish must not enter into the Holy of Holies at all. I guess he don't have a pimple. He can't go in there, I guess. A priest with a defect or blemish must not come near to offer the food of Yahweh. A priest with a temporary blemish must participate in the service until it is healed. The priest must not enter uh, must, must not exchange their duties with other ascendants or Levites. And it goes on and on and on. And, verse, uh, and, and number 76, which is kind of part of what you'll find in our lesson today, that the priest must not eat of the holy offerings while uh, ritually unclean. And we find that in Leviticus 22, 6 through 7, which I'll share with you in a bit. They, these, these laws go on and on and on. And again, like number 78, do not fail to ritually purify or laundering or bathing at the appointed time after becoming ritually unclean that these laws were very difficult for these people to be able to adhere to uh, but again that was the law sabbath another word that's dominant in our lesson today according to uh, uh jewish uh, law sabbath is was observed a few minutes before sunset on friday evening until the appearance of three stars in the sky on Saturday night, Sabbath was ushered in by lighting candles and reciting a blessing. Traditionally, three festive meals are eaten uh, in the morning and then uh, in the evening, the morning and late afternoon. Uh, the evening meal was typically begins with a blessing called the Kaddish and other blessings cited over the two loaves of Kala, which is a bread. Uh, Sabbath closed the following evening 
uh, with the uh, Avadala blessing. Sabbath is a festive day when Jews exercise their freedom from regular labors of everyday life. It offers an opportunity to contemplate the spiritual aspects of life and spend time with fat, uh, spend time with family and God as well. Amen. Uh, this uh, word Sabbath is uh, we see it eight times in our lesson today. Uh, it leads some uh, it has led some to believe that the word Sabbath uh, is a, uh, is used in a general sense and it, and it refers to multiple types of Sabbaths, which I've shared with you in multiple lessons that there's these weekly Sabbaths, but there's also ultimately other Sabbaths that we have uh, shared in past lessons. Amen. So Sabbath, I, I share with you as well that uh, that the, the Sabbath began in Genesis 2 and 2 when God uh, rested from his uh, creation activities and he didn't rest because he was tired. He rested to admire his great work and it did not occur until the uh, Moses received the law and no observance of the Sabbath was for approximately 2,666 2, years. I know a lot of folks want to put a lot of weight to the Sabbath, but uh, it is not as important as one may have. It was given to the Jews, no doubt, but it is not like there is this absolute uh, thou shalt uh, keep the Sabbath for, for all folks, except for those who are Jews. Amen. That the law was given to Moses uh, and the Sabbath was given to the children of Israel. That uh, it says in the six days, you have six days in which to do your work, but the seventh day is a day of rest dedicated to me. And also God's uh, objective was in giving them the Sabbath that they would spend some time with God and acknowledge who he is and what he has done for you. We find in Mark 2, 23 through, 20, uh, uh, 23 through 28, and he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, but not man for the Sabbath. So the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, the Sabbath was made for man and uh, not man for the Sabbath. Amen. So I share with you uh, this temple. It's another, uh, the house of God. Uh, and uh, here David had uh, had finally become king and now he wanted to build a, a permanent resting place for the Shekinah glory of Almighty God. And because of his sin, God would not allow him to build this uh, temple this uh, uh, this tap this permanent place for God's glory, and in verse ten, and now the Lord fulfilled this word which is spoken. Uh, this is Solomon speaking, for I have risen into the place of my father David and to sit on the throne of Israel, just as the Lord promised, and and have built the house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. Verse eleven, and I have placed the ark, the symbol of His presence, in which the covenant of the Lord and the Ten Commandments which were made with the people and descendants of Israel that that this uh, temple this this house of God uh, house of the Lord is uh, was was built by Solomon amen and this temple or house of God was a centerpiece of Jewish community uh, Solomon would built the first temple and it was destroyed in the Babylonian uh, captivity and Herod's temple uh, was a temple at the time of Jesus. It took 46 years to build. It was not as magnificent as Solomon's temple, but it was a very large structure, not like churches today. Everyone made their pilgrimages to the temple to pay the respects to Almighty God, as well as to make their appropriate sacrifices. Amen. Fulfilling the law requirements. Amen. So our, our, our lesson today is uh, is in the, the gospel uh, according to Matthew and um, and the authorship. Early Christian writers and traditions have attributed the authorship of the gospel of Matthew to the apostle Matthew. Many scholars question whether or not Matthew was a true author of the first of the first gospel, but there is no way uh, that this current time to be absolutely positive based on historical evidence. But both most agree that Matthew was the author. And the Bible reveals that Matthew or Levi, as he was sometimes called, collected taxes for the Romans. And, and one day Jesus passed by and called Matthew to come and follow him. And Matthew did so. Amen. So the summary of this book, uh, we're about almost done with this background and uh, words and terms and, and such. 
And uh, Jesus of Nazareth was indeed the long-awaited Messiah, King of the Jews, as foretold by the ancient Jewish prophets. And he came to reveal how to enter, enter the kingdom of heaven. So the purpose of this book of Matthew, it is obvious that the Gospel of Matthew was written for the purpose of revealing that the man Jesus of Nazareth had act, was actually the King of the Jews. The long-awaited Messiah, the sovereign Lord Jehovah, who had came from heaven to this world, revealing to mankind the kingdom of heaven. The king of the Jews, the Messiah, Jesus fulfilled every prophecy that was spoken about him in the ancient Jewish centuries of uh, scriptures. In the Old Testament, the prophecies that spoke of the kingdom that the Messiah would bring would be a spiritual kingdom that would never be destroyed. Amen. And a quick summary of this book, uh, it begins with the genealogy uh, uh, of, um, of Jesus going back uh, through David, uh, talks about the wise men and, uh, and about the story of Joseph and Mary and the return to their flight to Egypt and return to Nazareth, about John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Jesus, about how Jesus was tested in the wilderness and uh, how he begins his, his uh, public ministry in Capernaum. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount is in, and included uh, in in this uh, uh, in the chapters five, six, and seven, and then uh, chapter eight is uh, there is these demonstration of the ethics of those uh, of um, um, stories of the the Sermon on the Mount. Chapter nine, uh, six more miracles Jesus calls uh, Matthew, uh, and he contends with these Pharisees, which is a, a big issue that he contends with. Uh, chapter 10, Jesus commissioned the 12 to preach the gospel of the kingdom uh, uh, to the nation of Israel. And in chapter 11, he's quizzed by, uh, quizzed by disciples of John and rejects the repentant cities, issued an invitation, invitation to individuals to, to follow him. And, uh, and to, and to uh, um, this, um, this uh, new uh, um, gospel and verse uh, 12. Uh, the conflict and the final break of Jesus with the religious leaders, these Pharisees who have a, a seriously problem with Jesus. Amen. So now I finished all the background and uh, gosh, a bit, a bit of time, almost 16 minutes there, but, but, uh, but, but it was, I think it's relevant to the rest of this lesson. Uh, now to our Sunday school lesson, justice and Sabbath laws, Matthew 12 uh, verses one through 14 and beginning at uh, verse one. And today we're, we're doing it out of the Amplified just for this dramatic, dramatic and, uh, and, this, and this more clarity. Uh, at that particular time, verse one, Jesus went through the fields of standing grain on the Sabbath day, which we know as a day of rest. And his disciples, uh, those 12 were hungry and they began to pick off the spikes of grain to eat. Amen. And I, I share with you this corn versus wheat, and, uh, and you find in Mark 2 and 23, uh, that on the Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields and his disciples began to pick the heads of grain as they walked along. And Luke 6 and 1, uh, one Sabbath, Jesus was passing through the grain fields and his disciples began to pick the heads of grain and rub them together uh, to, to rub them in their hands to eat them and that's how uh, that's why it's believed that it is wheat and not ears of corn amen Sunday school lesson justice uh, and the Sabbath laws Matthew 12 uh, verse 2 and again our, our, our subject is uh, our just and merciful God verse 2 and when the Pharisees, those religious leaders, saw it, they saw what was going on, and they said to him, Jesus, see your disciples, those 12, what are they are, are doing what is unlawful and not permitted on the Sabbath? That here these uh, Jewish uh, religious leaders are, are questioning Jesus about what is occurring with his followers. Amen. And, uh, and technically, they were not accurate. And I'll share with you in Deuteronomy 23 and 25, and this comes out of NIV, 
these are um, I shared with you earlier the 613 laws but there are other miscellaneous laws and we find this in uh, Deuteronomy uh, 15 uh, through 25 has the whole uh, essence of this particular uh, that a series of these laws, I'm sorry, these miscellaneous laws, a series of these miscellaneous laws, but verse 25 is germane to what has just occurred. It says, if you enter your neighbor's grain field, you may pick kernels with your hands, but you must not put a sickle to their standing grain. The spirit of, of being able to go into uh, a neighbor's uh, field. And as long as you're not taking a sickle, which would be a process for harvest, then you had the ability to to do exactly what Jesus and the disciples were doing. Sunday School Lesson, Justice and the Sabbath Laws, Matthew 12, uh, and our just and merciful God. And he said to them, you have not even read what David did when he was hungry? No, excuse me. He said to them, have you not even read what David did when he was hungry and and those who accompanied him and how he went into the house of God and he ate the loaves of showbread which was not uh, was not lawful for him to eat nor for the men who accompanied him but for the priest only and I shared with you this earlier story how David uh, being pursued by Saul amen And this uh, here is in, in Samuel. Uh, I'm sorry, here it is now. The, the David is, was pursued by Samuel. I mean, by uh, by Saul. And you found in 1 Samuel 21, uh, and this is chapter, verses 1 through 6. And when David came to Nob, to Ahimelech, the priest, and Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David, and he said unto him, Why art thou alone, and no man with thee? And David said unto Himelech the priest, the king, which is Saul, hath commanded me a business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee. Again, David was really just fleeing from Saul. Uh, Saul was trying to kill him. And what I have commanded thee, and I have appointed my service to such a place. That that's how we've gotten here. Uh, verse 3 and now, therefore, what is under thine hand? And he sees those loaves and he give me five loaves of bread in mine hand or what there is present. And verse four, and the priest answered David and said, there is no common bread under mine hand, but, uh, or my hand is under thy, my, my control, right? But uh, there is hollow bread, which is this show bread. And if the young man have kept themselves from at least, at least from women, uh, and David answered the priest and said unto him, the truth, the women have been kept from us uh, about three days. The women have been kept from us for about three days. And since I came out and the vessels of the young men are holy, that the, the bodies of these young men are holy because they have not been with uh, anything that's unclean. And the bread is a matter of common now because it's no longer on the table. So it's, it's common bread. Yea, though it is sanctified this day in the vessel. And, uh, and I share with you earlier in Leviticus 22, 6 and 7, and that verse 76 was that they, that the priest had to be, un, could not be uh, unclean when they ate uh, the bread. The bread was allowable as long as you were not unclean amen and so david uh, took five of these loaves as he left amen sunday school lesson uh justice and sabbath laws matthew 12 uh verse 5 uh or have you ever read the in the law that on the sabbath day the priest in the temple um that priest who who work in the, the temple of God, or in this case was a, uh, uh, the tabernacle in David's time. But uh, the, the priest who work in the, in, in, um, in the temple violate the sanct sanctity of the Sabbath, breaking it, yet are guiltless. 
And I, I share with you the from Exodus 28 through 11, which is part of the Ten Commandments. So remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And, and, and Moses shared with the people that six days shall thou labor and do all your work. But the Sabbath, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. And in it or on it, you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your animals, nor the aliens that are within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, and but rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So these uh, these uh, priests were supposed to keep uh, the Sabbaths just like everybody else, but, uh, but unfortunately they could not because their duties required them to constantly break the Sabbath. Amen. Sunday school lesson, justice and Sabbath laws, uh, verse six. But I tell you something, the greater and more exalted and more majestic than that temple is here. That I tell you that one that is greater than the temple is here. And that would be himself, Jesus. Amen. So there is this, uh, this, this um, um, back and forth with these uh, Pharisees that they're trying to support their point of view, but not uh, very well as they have this dialogue with Jesus. Sunday school lesson, justice and Sabbath laws, verse seven and eight. And if you had only known what this, what, what this is saying means, I desire mercy, reading, readiness to help, to, to spare, to forgive rather than sacrifice and sacrificial victims, you would not have commended, the, uh, condemned the guiltless. And that's what their goal was to condemn uh, Jesus and those who were with him. For the son of man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. And I share with you in the King James, it says, but if you had, had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. That was him and, and his uh, disciples for the son of man. Jesus is, is Lord even of the Sabbath. Amen. So uh, Jesus was not, uh, he never sinned, nor did he recommend or encourage anyone to violate the law. That, that, that this dialogue that Jesus has with these uh, Pharisees was not him to try to subvert the law and to try to, try to, to get around uh, the law, that he was uh, showing them with facts uh, according to their own scriptures. Uh, and in fact, one that uh, that he met with the accusers that these men who had no genuine, consistent loyalty to the scriptures, I think they knew that the Old Testament, what the Old Testament said, but they twisted and perverted scripture to seem like it was supported the religious empire that they had built. Remember the Sadducees and the Pharisees that this was their they were the ones who were in control and they wanted to keep that and they just like when he, Jesus turned over the money changers that they were making the money and this was a commerce for them so that they were twisting the scriptures in order to support their point of view in order to keep themselves in power number two fact two there's no violation of the old testament law in this event and Jesus proves that with scripture on top of scripture and verse three J Jesus implies the Pharisees were inconsistent they showed partiality in making ac accusations. Uh, and in fact, for Jesus reference that the priest showed that if Pharisees were consistent in their human traditions about the Sabbath, that even the priests would have been guilty. They, they, they themselves, and they were guiltless because no law was being violated. Amen. Jesus claims his authority also in this uh, text in, in verse 8 and, and the words contain the grounds for the authoritative judgment of the previous verse and it, is, it asserts that this also came within the limits of his jurisdiction as the Messiah just as the power to forgive sin had been claimed by him under his 
the same title, again, the Messiah. In both instances, however, the choice of the title is, uh, is significant, that he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Uh, what is done is done by him as the representative of humanity, acting as it were its, in its name, the claim for as such what he thus seems at first to claim himself as a special and absolute prerogative, that he is this authority. And that's what Jesus is claiming when he speaks to these uh, these. Uh, these religious leaders and and they don't like the fact that he's he's basically claiming his authority in their presence amen and i and I, I liken this text to another one where uh i i share with you uh luke 4 17 through 21 where jesus does this a number of times where he claims his authority uh and we know that when jesus entered to the entered into the temple that he uh, that here he opened the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and he handed uh, and it was handed to him and then rolling it he found a place where it was written and in verse eighteen said the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor and he has uh, he's present he has sent me to proclaim the freedom to the prisoners to recover sight to the blind to set the captives free to proclaim the year of the Lord's fav favor and verse twenty. And he rolled up the scroll and he gave it back to this attendant and he sat down and his eyes were, uh, eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened to him. And he began saying today, this scripture was fulfilled in your ears. Again, Jesus was claiming his authority in this instance and he, and he acclaimed his authority in many places in the scripture. We said, I and the father are one. If you have seen me, if you've seen the father and he, and he says that in, in this presence of the, of the, of the, uh, Pharisees in this case that he says, I am the Lord of the, the Sabbath. Uh, and that is, uh, uh, what power and authority that Jesus has as being the Messiah. The very word of God who became flesh and dwelt among us. And, and as Christians, we too have a, a, a authority that we have authority that are, we are charged to go into the world to make disciples, to baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, to teach them, obey all the things which I have commanded you. That is our authority. That is our charge as Christians. That that is where we have the the authority to stand on the very promises of God. That all the promises of God in Christ are yes and amen. That we have the the ability to resist Satan and sin. That we that we can speak to 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 uh that we resist Satan and he has to flee from us. We can, we don't have to live in sin, that we have the full armor of God, that we're not defenseless against the wiles of Satan and his, and his, uh, and his demons, that we have authority over our circumstances, that we are not born into circumstances that, that will perpetually keep us into those circumstances. We can rise above our, our birth and above our, where we've come from and we can boldly go to the throne of grace and with our petitions to almighty God because we are children of the most high God and we can lay our pro our, 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 our prayers into the throne of, of grace and we can ask anything to our father in the name of Jesus who is our redeemer is our we have our salvation we stand on every word of God with boldly and with confidence and, and we can have an expectation of the answers to the petition that we lay up to almighty God to, that we can speak to the issues that are that deal with us so we can we can we can not have uh, um uh, have sin or we cannot have sickness or our our our, perp our problems in our lives that we can we can ask almighty god for relief from all the problems in our lives and he with hears us he answers us because we are children of the most high god that is our authority as christians just as jesus exercised his authority we too have the ability to exercise our authority as christians as the us chosen before the foundation of the world as children of the most high God, as followers of Jesus. Amen. Sunday school lesson, Sabbath laws, Matthew 12, verses nine through 10. Verse nine, and going from there, he, Jesus, went into their synagogue and behold a man with, uh, there with one withered hand. And they, the Pharisees said to him, Jesus, 
Is it lawful or liable to cure people on the Sabbath day? <laughs> Hypothetically, I guess, rhetorically, uh, that they might accuse him. Right. And here they tried to set a trap. They thought that they could set a trap and Jesus would fall into it. Uh, no. Sunday school lesson, uh, uh, just as the Sabbath laws, verses 11 and 12. But, but he, Jesus, said unto them, those Pharisees, what man is among you if he has only one sheep and it falls into a pit or a ditch on that Sabbath day? Will not he take hold of it and lift it out? Verse 12, how much better uh, and of more value is a man than a sheep? So it is good and lawful and allowable to do good on the Sabbath days. Amen. Uh, verses 13 and 14. And these are the final verses in our lesson. And, and then he, Jesus, said unto the man, reach out your hand. And the man reached out, reached it out and it was restored. Jesus healed him. And as sound as the other hand, in verse 14, but the Pharisees went out and held a consultation against him. How they might do away with him, how they might kill Jesus. Amen. I provide you a commentary of the last two verses. And when the Pharisees began plotting how, and then the Pharisees began plotting how they would kill Jesus. And they believed that the strict observance of the Sabbath was the was a way to merit God's favor because of their generation generational history of breaking God's covenant and losing their blessings. They believed that the Jewish people stay ceremon ceremonially pure. Uh, if, if they did that, God would break the yoke of the Roman oppression and give them their land again. They thought that keeping the Sabbath was a means to an end so they devised many rules to get there on top of that they wanted to murder jesus for undermining their rules even though he was actually doing a good deed this is religion that is twisted and deformed and jesus turned this concept on his head the sabbath was a means to attain the end of doing good and showing justice and mercy this is what the people need. The Sabbath was not designed to oppress people, but to liberate them and set them free and to keep them into a relationship with Almighty God. Amen. That under this justice and these Sabbath laws, that these Pharisees, that they were, uh, they were handing out fake justice. That their their justice was not was more about their money and their and their power and their respect and their influence than it was about them doing what was according to the very word of God and that and that is the problem that they had here in this lesson and Jesus uh, revealed that to the people Amen. So Jesus is our Sabbath rest. Jesus is our Sabbath rest in part because he is Lord of the Sabbath. Uh, we found in our lesson today, Matthew 12 and 8, that as God, as God incarnate, he decides the pure meaning of the Sabbath because he created it. He is our Sabbath rest in the flesh. And when the Pharisees criticized him for healing on the Sabbath, Jesus reminded them that even they, sinful as they were, would not hesitate to pull a sheep out of a pit, pit on the Sabbath. Because he came to seek and to save his sheep who would hear his voice and enter into the Sabbath rest he prov provided by paying for their sins. He could not break the Sabbath rules. He told the Pharisee that people were not important, more important than the sheep and salvation he provided was more important than the rules they were and then, than their rules by saying that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the sabbath jesus was restating the principle that the sabbath rest was instituted to, be, to re, 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 uh, relieve man of his labors that he didn't have to work all seven days that on one day that he would have some some rest 
just as he came to relieve, uh, relieve us of our attempting to achieve salvation by our works and by keeping those laws, those, those, uh, those 10 and those 613, no longer rest for one day, but forever cease our laboring to attain God's favor. Jesus is our rest from works now. Just as the just as he is the door to heaven, where we will rest in him forever, that that our, our eternal resting place is and is with him. And that is an amazing thing. Amen. That is our Sunday school lesson for this week. Justice and the Sabbath laws, Matthew twelve, one through fourteen, our just and merciful God. And my prayer for you is something you've learned today, strengthen your faith as the Lord provides for all your needs that you learn something worthy of sharing and that you enjoy learning about justice and the Sabbath laws and how Jesus interacted with those uh, Pharisees and how ultimately they will do their best to take him out and, uh, uh, and to kill him uh, for undermining their authority and power and influence and that you, incur, you are encouraged to learn with us. And if you would so choose, hit the subscribe button uh, and get these lessons automatically. And I send you out with a benediction as I do always. Heavenly Father, send us out with confidence in your word to tell the world of your saving acts to bring glory to your names in the name of Jesus who is our Redeemer. That is in him who is our Sabbath rest. It is in the name of Jesus who we, we put our hope and faith in. In his name we pray and ask these things always. Amen. And thank you so much for your time. Amen.